They say the people who exhibit the most kindness have experienced a lot of pain. The ones who act like they don't need love are the ones who need it more. The ones who take care of everyone else's needs are the ones who need it most. And the people who smile a lot may be the ones who cry when no one is around. The first piece of advice I was given when I became a student leader was to not let other people's circumstances and situations consume me. Before I was given this advice, I found myself on multiple occasions becoming numb to my emotions and ignoring what my body was telling me because all I had was a voice in the back of my mind saying, oh, she might relapse if I don't check up on her every 10 minutes or he's going through a lot right now, so don't show any form of emotion or he might feel offended. This way of thinking is a frequent occurrence to most leaders and people who just generally want to be there for others. But we need to prevent ourselves from falling deeper and deeper into this rabbit hole of self-negation. Self-negation is the denial of evidence and existence of oneself. Helping others to the point where you've lost all motivation, all sense of self, and you have become numb to your surroundings is extremely dangerous. You can become so consumed by what everyone else is going through that you lose concern for yourself. This will affect your mental, emotional and physical health to such an extent that you may need professional intervention or medication. This of course is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of, but we want to prevent this from happening as much as possible. Thomas Anthony Harris, a psychiatrist and author, wrote a book entitled I'm OK, You're OK, and it discusses the four life positions. I'm not OK, you're not OK. I'm not OK, you're OK. I'm OK, you're not OK. And I'm OK, you're OK. In the context of helping others, I'm not OK, you're not OK refers to a situation where Sam, for example, is going through a tough time. So I internalize Sam's problems, and because of this, I suffer as well. I'm not okay, you're okay, is when I have helped Sam through a tough spot, and now Sam is okay, but I have taken Sam's pain and suffering and placed it upon myself. I'm okay, you're not okay, is when I acknowledge that Sam is not okay, but I'm okay, and I will stay okay while helping Sam reach the point where Sam feels okay. And lastly, I'm okay, you're okay. This is where Sam has gone through a rough time, but together Sam and I work through the situation and come out as stronger and more positive people. In order to reach this ideal position of I'm okay, you're okay, we need to make a conscious effort to take care of ourselves. Self-care is taking the time to attend to our basic physical, mental and emotional needs. In other words, recharge our batteries. As a student leader, I have found that allowing myself to clear my mind has allowed me to continue to help the people around me who need it. Some of the things we can do to keep ourselves feeling okay are number one, making an effort to acknowledge and express our emotions. This is difficult, of course, because one can easily accept the feeling of good emotions, such as joy and excitement. But admitting to the bad emotions, such as doubt, sadness, regret, and anxiety, isn't always pleasant. But suppressing these emotions will only add to the tension building up inside. Number two, taking the time out of your day to just breathe. In through the nose, hold for a couple of seconds, and out through the mouth. And finally, doing any form of meditation or calming activity, whenever possible. This could be going for a jog, taking a long bath, or even sitting alone in your room and listening to music. These are all little but very important things that we should do to motivate ourselves to keep going. And in closing, I will leave you with a quote that I think we should all have playing in the back of our minds by an author who goes by Dudinsky. And it reads, be there for others, but never leave yourself behind. Thank you.